Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod Science Classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 26 February 2022. In this lecture, we are going to discuss 5 to 6 topics which are very much relevant from our UPSC point of view. So already I recorded a separate video on Russia-Ukraine conflict from the starting to till date. And we are going to post that video by today evening. So because of that, we didn't discuss the articles regarding this Russia-Ukraine in today's lecture. So which is important from UPSC point of view, we are going to discuss that in this lecture. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see the quote. So quote is, only surround yourself with people who will lift you higher. That means you have to be in a place where you will be have a, a positive vibrations. So if there are any someone who is acting negatively on you, so please try to avoid those people. For example, if you're staying in a hostel or any PG, so you'll be having other friends and you will be going for meeting for, uh, for at the tea like that. So if they are saying anything and if, you, if that is demotivating you and your preparation, so please try to avoid that. Because these three months are very, very important and this plays a crucial role in your life. Because if you fail this prince again, you have to sit for one more year. So please try to avoid negativity and only please surround the people who mainly have some positive impact on you. Okay, so now let us try to see the first topic it is regarding West led global order. Title says inflection point for the West led global order. So actually this article which is mainly focusing on Russia China ties and even relationship with the other European countries or West countries with Russia. So this article it is important from your international relations point of view which mainly comes in a GS paper too. And this Russia-Ukraine issue will be a very important topic for your prelims and even mains. And from prelims point of view, you have to know some important map-based locations. So let me know which is the river which is mainly passing through the Ukraine, which is dividing Ukraine into two parts. So in this type of uh, way, in this type, you can see the questions that will appear in your prelims. So let me know which is that river and let me know the answer in the comment box. And now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So this article, it is mainly focusing on Russia and China ties. So first, let us go to background. Already you know that Russia, Russia and Ukraine, they are at high tensions now. And even this Ukraine crisis, which has come to a head with Russia beating the bullet and launching a full scale invasion on Ukraine. So now we are seeing there is a full scale invasion of Ukraine and even Russia mainly attacked some places in the capital city as well. So in this context, here United Nations Secretary General, that is UNSG, SG President, he also warned that we are at a moment of peril and we need to call for restraint, reason and de-escalation across this Russia-Ukraine border. So in this context, because of increasing of tensions across this uh, Russia and Ukraine border and Russia, it is mainly saying that yes, we are need, we, if, if there is any need, we will also go to war. So Russia mainly came up with three important demands. So first one is Ukraine should not join NATO and whatever the NATO forces that are present across this uh, border of Russia, they have to remove. And even which are the countries which mainly joined after this 1997, okay, the countries which mainly joined NATO after this 1997, they need to withdraw. So these are the three important demands which is made by uh, Russian president that is Mr. Putin mainly to come up with de-escalation regarding this Russia-Ukraine tensions. So this is according to yesterday's news, some news channel which mainly highlighted these three demands. So I am sharing with you, okay. And if you see some more important points which are given in this article, it mainly says that Russian troops that had massed on Ukraine's border for months and now we now they were preparing to launch an assault on Ukraine and after Russian president recognized the Russian backed rebel areas of Donetsk and as well as Lushank as independent and even challenge the historical right of Ukraine to exist. So what is the issue here? So if you see this map here, you can see two important areas. Here we have Crimea Peninsula and here we have this Donetsk and Luhansk. Okay, so in these areas, 
this is mainly uh, inhabited by russian based separatist group and this group will be mainly supported by russia and now earlier these areas donetsk and as well as luhansk area they were autonomous regions but now russia declared them as independent so whenever russia declared this areas as independent if there is any conflict with this uh, with this ukraine which is happening in this areas then russia can directly involve here okay so this is the one important thing so apart from that here mr putin also continued to insist that he was open to direct and honest dialogue but whatever the steps were taken in by the russian president so because of this incidents or because of this steps which were mainly taken by this russian president so what are the dialogue they want to go so this dialogue which is becoming very very difficult to sustain and even russia also started launching special military operations and russia started alleging that ukraine's border okay ukraine's democratically elected government had been responsible for 8 8 years of genocide so since 2014 onwards there were some issues which were happening between in russia and as well as ukraine in 2014 russia also annexed crimea so from 2014 onwards and even before this 2014 onwards so here russia uh, ukraine's democratically ele elected government which is mainly responsible for this 8 years of genocide so this is the thing which mainly set by this russian president and moscow it is mainly seeming the goal here is demilitarization especially which are the nato forces that came here they need to go back and they also talking about denazification of this ukraine and if you are talking about what is the impact that is seen on the european countries or what is the opinion of this european countries or the west countries regarding this russia ukraine crisis so already we discussed this topic in detail in our separate video right so hours before the invasion the western countries they had imposed a new round of sanction against moscow so other countries like for example us us already imposed sanctions on russia okay so even though because of this russia ukraine conflict us says that it is mainly the territorial threat or territorial integrity so it is a threat for territorial integrity and sovereignty of ukraine so they started imposing new more sanctions on this russia here and this sanctions which are mainly targeting russian individuals and as well as banks which are linked to this putin regime and not only this even german chancellor who mainly suspended the certification of this nord stream 2 actually this is the one of the major gas pipeline between the russia and as well as germany okay but whatever the steps which are taken by these western countries they do not have proper impact on this putin calculus so this is one cause of concern and if you are talking about usa president usa president in his response to this invasion he also suggested that washington and its allies would respond in a united decisive way to an unprovoked and unjustified attack by russian military forces on ukraine so here usa says that so this usa which is having a security pact that is called as nato and nato which started expanding so now it is a, it is like 30 member okay 30 member nato now then what happened even though ukraine which is not part of this nato us says that if anything which is happening to ukraine means we will wage a war against this usa okay and if at all us says yes we have to wage the war means so other members of this nato they need to also participate here but if you see this european nations which are having some cause of concern because these european nations which are mainly dependent on russia especially for energy security these countries especially some west countries and even countries which are sharing boundary with this russia they are mainly dependent on this russia for natural gas and as well as crude oil so if they are going for war, war means this gas supply and oil supply will be stopped then this will be mainly affecting the energy security of those countries so because of this european countries they are not at ready for going for the war regarding this russia so this is the thing which is mainly said here okay so if you are talking about the future action whether this european country will participate or not it is like a unknown thing okay unknown thing there is no clarity regarding this because already we know that here these european countries they are very much dependent on this russia for their energy security and european union also announced a massive package of sanctions 
as it comes to the terms with the darkest hour in Europe since Second World War. So even European Union came up with announcing of sanctions on this Russia now. So USA also imposed sanctions and as well as European Union also imposed some sanctions here. So in this context, Russian president, okay, Russian president, for he, this article says that for Mr. Putin, this is a movement to use Ukraine to highlight his border demands of reconstructing this post Cold War European security order. So if you are talking about security order at the time, at the time here of, for, after World War II, so after World War II, so there was a formation of these two power blocks, that is global power blocks. First one is USA and second one is USSR at that time. So USA along with some western countries and European countries, it formed a security pact that is called as NATO. So in the same way USSR, it is a 15 countries group, they formed WhatsApp pact here. So now what happened NATO which is mainly expanding, but on another side USSR which mainly disintegrated in 1991. And some countries which were part of this estimable USSR, they also started joining this NATO. So even Ukraine want to join this NATO. So this because of this, there was in increasing of escalations between this uh, Russia and Ukraine. So because of this, there is increasing of troops across this Russia-Ukraine border that mainly seen here. Okay. So if you are talking about European countries, they are mainly focusing on uh, this uh, Russia-Ukraine issue and they don't want to go for war because they want to ensure their own energy security. So if you are talking about this image, you can see, so these are the number of pipelines through which gas connection, that is natural gas and even crude oil which is mainly supplied from Russia towards these other countries. So here we have Nord Stream 1, here we have Nord Stream 2 and here we have Northern Lights and Brotherhood Lines, Turk Stream, Blue Stream. So these are the some important examples of this uh, national level pipelines which are mainly connecting Russia with the other countries and this will be helpful for supplying of natural gas and even some crude oil such that it will be helpful for maintaining of energy security of those countries. And European Union's energy security which is mainly dependent on Russia in reality. If you are talking about European Union which is mainly importing about 39% of total gas imports and 30% of oil from Russia. So this is according to European Union. And even some Central and Eastern European countries they are 100% dependent on this Russian gas. Okay. Even if they are entering into the war and if they want to cut the supply and if they want to import oil or natural gas from other sources means it will be very very costly. It is not feasible for these European countries. And one on another side we can see there is a strong Beijing, there is strong China. Already you know that Russia China ties are increasing day by day and they are, they are very much close together now. Okay, so this is also one cause of concern especially for India. So if India want to include in this war and if this India want to join this USS, uh, USA means then what happened it will be coming far from this Russia. Already we know that China Russia ties are increasing and even Pakistan which is a good friend of this China. So if you are talking about strategical location of India here we have China and here we have Pakistan. From the both the sides we have some threats right. So if you are talking about a strong Beijing this ineffectual western response has emboldened not only Russia but also China as the focus of the West is in danger of moving away from this Indo-Pacific. And Russia-China axis is only getting very much stronger day by day. So because of this is one of cause of concern. So even if you go to past and if you see in 1972, US President that is Richard Nixon shook hands with this Chinese uh, Premier and that mainly altered the global order and that led to emergence of rise, emergence or the rise of a power of China. So because of this, here we need to focus on this as well. And even if you are focusing on this a balance of power, so China mainly develops a strategic partnership with Russia here. So the future of this Western uh, global order will be defined like how effectively it is mainly response or it is mainly going to respond to this crisis of Ukraine. So this is issue and one more important issue that is seen in news here uh, it is uh, regarding Chernobyl nuclear reactor okay. So one more important news here it is regarding Chernobyl. So where is this Chernobyl is located if you see here it is a queue 
Kiev it is a capital city of Ukraine. So with the help of uh, Belarus here Russia which mainly entered Ukraine. So whenever it is entering uh, Ukraine from Belarus, so through the north of this Kiev we have this Chernobyl. Okay. So what happened? There was one nuclear accident which mainly happened in 1986 in this Chernobyl. But at that time this uh, Ukraine was under part of this USSR. So because of this the information regarding the Chernobyl had not been leaked. But because of this nuclear accident or nuclear incident that happened in this Chernobyl nuclear reactor that led to releasing of a much nuclear radiation actually. So even if you see 30 kilometers from this Chernobyl which is mainly under containment area actually. So it is like a protection area. So even till 30 kilometers we can see radioactivity that is mainly present. And recent reports which mainly said by Ukraine that yes in this uh, nuclear reactor there is increasing of uh, nuclear radioactivity that is seen. But Russia says that no no it is a thing which is mainly said by Ukraine just to avoid this type of uh, conflict between Russia and Ukraine. But recently there are many reports says that yes unusual radioactivity which is mainly increasing from this Chernobyl nuclear reactor and it mainly contains strontium and rhodium. Strontium and rhodium percentage is very very high and and now they went for closing of this actually whenever this incident was happened in 1986 so till now already it is like three decades so even though three decades had completed but the effect which had not been decreased so there was one study says that whenever the nuclear accident is happening whenever if any area which is seen like radioactivity so the impact will be seen for 26,000 years so for 26,000 years we can see the people who are present in this area or who are moving in this area, they can suffer cancer and some, some diseases because of this radioactivity. Okay, and if you're talking about this Chernobyl nuclear reactor, till now the radioactive waste which is not at all removed from that place. So there is a there is a time the reports which mainly says that they are going to continue this Chernobyl nuclear reactor till 2064 and by this time they are going to remove this nuclear waste. So again this Chernobyl it is a nuclear reactor because again there is some radioactivity which is mainly seen in this Chernobyl nuclear reactor. So this is also an important issue and we can correct this issue with this Russia Ukraine as well. Okay. So this is about this topic and actually I didn't add an article regarding this Chernobyl in today's lecture. So it is mainly present in the world page. Okay, so please refer that article. So this will be very, very important. And now let us try to see next topic. So if you're talking about a next topic, now we are going to talk about India Sri Lanka fishermen issue. And in yesterday's lecture, uh, lecture we start some introduction regarding this uh, India Sri Lanka on fisher, uh, fishermen issue. Again, it is in use because Sri Lankan Navy arrested 22 fishermen again, right? So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So we need to understand the context and we need to understand what are the reasons for this India Sri Lanka fishermen issue. And even we need to know about what is the way forward, what can be the steps that can be taken from the both the side. Actually, this topic is important from international relations, which mainly comes in the GS paper too. So now, let us try to see the context first. So fishermen from Tamil Nadu, they keep getting caught by this uh, Sri Lankan Navy, okay, regularly in the territorial waters of Sri Lanka in the name of poaching. So for poaching, here fishermen of uh, Tamil Nadu, they will be frequently caught by this Sri Lankan Navy. So if you're talking about latest development, Sri Lanka Navy arrested about 22 fishermen who are from Nagapattinam and as well as neighboring Karaikal. Okay, there are already 29 fishermen in the custody of Sri Lanka and now again 22 persons they were arrested now. So as per estimate, Sri Lankan authorities, they also have impounded, they also catch about 84 boats and what happened, the frequency of Indian fishermen, they are crossing this up international maritime boundary line uh, despite being awareness of consequences and this mainly highlights their level of desperation driven by this livelihood concerns so why this fishermen they are mainly crossing this uh, international maritime boundary line because inside this uh, inside this or uh, indian coast we do not get good amount of fish if they are crossing them only they will be getting good amount of fish that will be helpful for sustaining of their livelihood so mainly for sustaining of their livelihood they are crossing this international maritime boundary line and they are mainly caught by this in sri lankan navy so this is a very important issue 
and now let us try to see some reasons so first one is there is conflict of this kachatiyu island so i yesterday's lecture i showed about a map regarding this kachatiyu island right so if you are talking about this kachatiyu island so tamil nadu fishermen okay tamil fishermen they had actually traditional fishing rights and even uh, they having this fishing rights in this uh, uninhabited kachatiyu island for centuries but what happened during indira gandhi government in 1974 so this island which mainly ceded by sri lanka after an agreement and in this agreement now indian fishermen do not have the right to go for fishing but they can go for uh, drying of their nets and even they can go for taking of rest okay so because of this actually this is not accepted by this tamil fisherman so this is also one reason and next one is depleting resources in this indian region so what happened the fishermen who are from this indian side and whenever they are going for fishing in this indian waters actually this indian waters do not found much or rich maritime resources but they can found good amount of maritime resources in this sri lankan waters so because of this especially to maintain their livelihood to continue their livelihood they will be going into this water unfortunately they will be caught by this sri lankan navy and next one is proliferation of trawlers in indian coast so plenty of catch in this oceanic region had triggered uh, triggered a proliferation of fishing trawlers in tamil nadu coast in past 3 decades and they are mainly using some mechanized boats okay so because of this uh, whenever they are using this mechanized boats and as well as uh, they are going for deep trawling deep trawling means that will also leads to exploited fishing methods okay deep trawlers uh, means nothing but whenever the boat it is mainly moving and they will be having a very very heavy nets and whatever the fishes which are present from the sea floor they will be taken away so because of this what happens so whatever the small seedlings are also there they will be coming along with the net so because of this it is one of the exploited fishing method so because of this that is led into decreasing the number of fishes on indian side and next one is there is also threat to livelihood of people so especially so most of the people who are living in this coastal area they will be depend on the, upon this fishing right so whenever whenever there is no proper amount of available to fish in the indian side they have to go far to get the fishes mainly to sustain their livelihood and next one is enhanced monitoring of this uh, maritime border by sri lankan navy so whenever indian farmer indian fisherman they are mainly going for this sri lankan waters then what happen Uh, that that is also led into some issue between the indian fisherman and sri lanka fisherman so because of this what happened across this maritime boundaries there is increasing of monitoring of this sri lankan navy is also seen and this international uh, maritime boundary which is mainly guarded very tightly by this sri lankan navy and this one is we are also going for politicization of this issue okay it is one of the sensitive issue in tamil nadu in past one decade because most of the people who are mainly present in this coastal areas they are mainly fishing communities right actually from some decades onwards there is no permanent solution regarding this tamil nadu fisherman issue so now let us try to see what is the way forward i took this way forward which is given in today's article itself so if we talking about way forward the first one is governments of two countries they should fix a date okay they should fix a date for the early meeting of joint working group <coughs> actually actually for the last time this joint working group which mainly held in december 2020 from then onwards there is no joint working group and now there is a chance and they need to go for this uh, joint working group mainly to resolve this issue and second one is we need to facilitate the resumption of calls at the level of fisher flock especially from tamil nadu and as well as from northern province from the northern province of sri lanka and as well as from tamil nadu so we need to talk with the fishermen regarding what are the issues they are facing and we need to come up with a solution for those challenges and sri lanka should be proactive as it sits in the northern bay the brunt of alleged acts of transgression so we need to make this sri lanka the uh, sri lankan people okay should be proactive as citizens in the northern bay and next one here is we uh, from indian side especially from the government of india they need to provide some incentives and concessions for the fishermen to go for this deep sea fishing project rather than this deep trawling method okay and finally government can also be giving uh, give some assistance for the fishermen in the northern province as a gesture of this goodwill also okay so these can these kind of steps that can be taken 
And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding missiles hit Kyiv, city of the defensive. So this article, which is mainly talking about Russia-Ukraine issue. So now let us try to see the ground report. What is happening in this Ukraine? So Russian missiles, which mainly hit in this uh, Ukraine capital Kyiv. Okay, and fam in families are covered. Covered means nothing but they are in fear. Okay, they are in shelters and they are mainly having some fear. And authorities told this uh, residents to prepare Molotov uh, cocktails and they have to save the city from the assault. So this is the thing which mainly said by uh, said by the authorities. And if you see some important details, it mainly says that here Moscow claimed to have captured airfield which is mainly located in the northwestern part of this capital of Ukraine. Okay, and it is also having some vital staging post for planned assault on Kyiv. Kyiv, it is a capital city of Ukraine. And it is also going for some defensive phase. It is going for shots, explosions. They are mainly seen here. Okay, some residents, they are also have been sheltered in underground in metro stations as well. So these are the some important things that you need to know regarding what is happening in Ukraine. And there is also one article regarding this Indian diaspora. Already you know that about 20,000 Indians are mainly present in Ukraine. Okay. So if you see title, it mainly says that 470 Indian students moved to Romania. So what happened, if, uh, you know that embassies will be present in different countries, Indian embassies in different countries. So with the help of embassies of Romania, Hungary and as well as Poland. So Indian government went for evacuation of about 470 Indian students from this uh, Ukraine and they mainly moved to Romania. So this is one important thing and whenever you are talking about what will be the government role which is mainly played means you can talk about this article. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding surprise enemy with Indian arms says Prime Minister. So this article it is important from our GS paper 2 point of view. And now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So our Prime Minister he mainly said that he mainly focused and stressed about the importance of customization and as well as uniqueness of defense system for having a surprise element for adversaries. So if there is any adversaries happening or if, if there is any enemy who is attacking India means so we need to have a proper defense system. So we need to focus on customization and we need to have some unique defense system. For example, if you are importing defense system from one country, for example, let us take from country one, we are importing defense system. For example, after some years, after five years or after 10 years, we had a conflict with the same country where we are getting this uh, defense. So this country will be knowing that which um, which is the defense system that is present in India, right? So because of this, this country will be going for developing advanced technology that we already received from that country such that this will be having upper hand over India's defense system. So if we need to protect our territory and if we want to surprise our adversaries, so we need to focus on our own defense system. So this is the thing which mainly said by our prime minister. So there is a logic, right? And if you see some details, it mainly says that if you're focusing on uniqueness and surprise elements could only happen when the defense equipment is developed in our country. So here our prime minister said that if we if we are developing our own defense system and if you are developing our own defense system only means then we will be having some uniqueness and we can surprise our adversaries. So in this context, our prime minister will make a note on budget. So this year budget has a blueprint for developing a vibrant ecosystem and they are mainly focusing on research, design, development, manufacturing within the country. So this is the thing which mainly said by our prime minister. So why this statements are given by our prime minister? So our prime minister mainly addressing a post budget webinar. So the title of that webinar here is Atmanirbar Bharat in Defense Call to Action. So actually this webinar which mainly organized by defense ministry okay so in this in this webinar they mainly focused on the steps for implementing of various measures which mainly announced in our recent budget and whatever the things which are said that will be helpful for level playing field and to develop private industry and startups in india especially regarding this defense equipment so in this context our prime minister in prime minister said that so we need to have a transparent we need to have a time bound, we need to have a pragmatic, fair of trail and we need to focus on testing and certification. They are very much essential to the growth of vibrant defense industry. 
okay and in this context they also focused on we need to go for proper trail testing and certification and mainly for this trail testing and certification we need to going for setting up of an independent nodal umbrella body so whenever this umbrella body which is mainly set up then at that time we need to focus on that so this is about this topic and now let us try to see the next topic so before seeing the next topic here you need to focus on make it india program as well so it is very much relevant regarding this topic and next topic it is about war has put indian coffee exports to ukraine in jeopardy so in yesterday's lecture we studied a number of articles regarding what is the impact of russia ukraine conflict on india's imports and exports and now let us try to talk about one more topic which is very much relevant that is regarding coffee exports okay so in this context you need to know about which are the conditions which are necessary for growing of coffee in india so which are the conditions which are responsible for the growing of coffee in india so please let me know regarding those conditions already if you have completed your ncrt then you will be knowing about this conditions so let me know the answer in the comment box don't forget about this so if you see context it mainly says that the current crisis has put indian coffee exports to ukraine and neighboring countries in jeopardy so we do not have a proper clarity regarding whether we have to go for exports or not due to this russia ukraine conflict so if you see details it mainly says that india exported about 6604 metric tons of green bean and also instant and roast ground coffee to ukraine okay and it also exported like 23519 metric tons to russia so russia and ukraine we can say by this data they are largest importers of coffee and coffee exports to ukraine in fact it also increased to 7327 metric tons in the fiscal year 2018-19 okay so here there is also an ex, uh, expansion of exports that we can see here and even commonwealth independent states they were also traditionally they will also export or we can say like they will import they will import coffee okay they will import coffee here but if you see russia which currently accounts for 75% of uh, coffee exports and ukraine also have like 20% of the share here so we don't know whether how this russia ukraine conflict will impact on this coffee exports and even to its neighboring countries so one more important issue here is because of this russia ukraine issue there is increase of uh, crude oil prices also and even there is also increasing of metal price like aluminium some metal so actually this instant coffee will be transported uh, will be mainly packed in a metal cans and containers so because of this uh, increasing of fuel cry uh, fuel uh, price rise and even increasing of some metal and aluminium cost also that led to increasing of packaging material increase in the cost of packaging material so what happen whenever the logistic cost is increasing means overall cost of that product will be increased so because of this it will be also having some negative impact on buyers and as well as sellers as well so it is a one of the cause of concern so this is about this topic and i hope it is very much clear now let us try to see next top uh, next questions actually so these are the questions which i gave yesterday so now let us try to see explanation part so what is the oil spill so whenever any any ship which is mainly carrying oil okay what happened if there is any accident which is mainly happened so what are the oil which is carrying that will be spilled so this oil will be forming a layer on the water because of low density so it is mainly forming a layer so this kind of event is called as oil spill so first one is it reduces the photosynthetic activities yes whenever the oil which is mainly forming a layer means it will not allow the sunlight to penetrate so that the photosynthetic activity will be decreased and will be also result to killing of birds and mammals yes what happen because of uh, this oil which is mainly formed the sunlight will not be entering into this water such that the temperature will be cool so because of this it will kill the birds and as well as mammals and whenever the birds which are coming in the contact with this oil then what happen so for their feathers especially this oil will be uh, oil uh, oil will be spreaded right so because of this they can't move much large distances so because of this what happen uh, that birds will have the short span of life so here the food web of water bodies gets even more complex it is not the thing okay so the first and two statements only correct so correct option will be two only and next question here is out of initiatives given below which will prove to the factors having positive impact on menace of global warming the first one is eastern dedicated freight corridor yes it will be going to reduce the greenhouse gases 
and exponent is distal linear but distal linear is not focusing on that we can eliminate this second one and exponent is camping stress on LED bulbs yes we are focusing on this LED bulbs mainly to decrease some energy consumption and exponent is give it up camping yes it is also focusing on uh, to deduce a menace of global warming so correct option will be 3 1 3 and 4 only and there are today's questions the first question is about alteration uh, extension of wildlife so first question is regarding extension of wildlife so what are the reasons and second question it is regarding atmospheric greenhouse gases so try to read the statements will given below and give me the correct answer in the comment box there is no negative marking you can give your answer so by this i'm concluding so before concluding i want to make a small announcement on this platform so if you want to clear UPSC, I will strongly suggest you to join this prelims test series and as well as means answer writing course that we are providing in this Rathors IS Academy. And we also plan to provide you pen drive course, pen drive course of complete UPSC foundation course. Or if you want any individual course, you can take this pen drive course. Okay. And we also going to start this mains answer writing course batch from March 1st onwards. So this course will be very useful and I will be giving you a small outline of how this course will work. So in this course, after joining this course, we will be giving a detailed syllabus and even detailed timetable for you. And we will be giving you weekly targets like in this week, how many chapters you have to complete and this syllabus according to our UPSC. Okay, that is GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4. So first we will start with GS1. In GS1 first we will be starting with art and culture and later on we will move towards a modern history and post independent history, world history and society. So after completing entire GS1 we will be moving on to GS2. Okay and after completing entire GS2 we will be moving on to GS3 and after completing entire GS3 we will be going on to GS4. On Sunday we will be having a plan of either essay or case study. So in this one year course you will going to write more than 330 question answers and you are going to write 27 essays and 26 case studies so here we will be giving you weekly syllabus so you are going to complete that syllabus on sunday and monday and from monday onwards you will be start writing answers so before writing answer you will be going back and checking uh, once again revising that topic and you have to write and after writing you have to send that question for us to evaluation so after evaluation, you will be going through what are the mistakes you done and we will be also providing you modal answer for that. So each and every topic you are going for two to three times of revision for sure. Okay. So in this way, this course will be very much helpful for improving of your answer writing skills. And even we provide you one to one mentorship. If you have any doubt, you can call us and we will be giving you one to one mentorship. And this course it is absolutely beneficial, especially for beginners and even who already gave their attempts. Because mains, it is the one important factor that will break or make the deal. If you want to see your name in the final list, you have to join this course for sure. And the cost here is 7,200 and it is for one year. So for one year, for entire one year, you are going to pay just 7,200. That is per day, it is just 20 rupees. 20 rupees for one question. We are giving question. We are giving more lunch. There will be evaluation and there will be one-to-one -one mentorship syllabus will be given and resources uh, we will explain you the resources everything so please don't take a choice and please don't take a chance here try to join this course and achieve your dream of clearing upsc so by this i'm concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture thank you so much and subscribe to rathor science academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos